You may have looked at the title of this video and thought, Kems, what are you talking about? Everybody knows Wargaming loves the good players. Because good players are usually the ones that spend money. And while that is true, that does not mean Wargaming cares about the good players. In this video, I'll explain to you the contrary and how bad players are heavily carried by Wargaming. But to counter your argument about good players, I would like to draw your attention to the new clan wars. Wargaming is adjusting the clan wars rewards so that there are more tanks for the bond auction. In case you don't know, in clan wars, Wargaming will present a certain number of reward tanks. You can fight clan wars battles to earn a currency called fame. And the players with the most fame will receive a reward tank. So for example, if there are 3000 chieftains available, the top 3000 fame earners will receive a chieftain. If you do not have enough fame, you can still bid for a tank in the bond auction where you bid with bonds. Wargaming has put the majority of Clan Wars reward tanks in the bond auction. This is basically a fuck you to all the good players who are capable of doing well in Clan Wars, and instead are allowing trash players to have accumulated bonds over the years to get a reward tank without much effort. Wargaming understands that most good players already have a chieftain and other strong rewards, so they're trying to level the playing field by allowing bad players to get them as well. And unlike Quickie Baby, I will not be referring to trash players as inexperienced, because at 20,000 battles, you should be experienced. Despite this, there are players that are actually worse than Klaus Kellerman, despite the fact that they have been playing since the game's inception. The theme that is very prevalent in this video is the skill ceiling is lowering and the skill floor is rising. To clarify, a skill floor is a term used to describe the bare minimum knowledge you must have on a game in order to enjoy playing it. And a skill ceiling is the highest level of game knowledge someone can accumulate and utilize. In other words, it's a theoretical limit to just how good a player can be. For example, Cookie Clicker has a skill floor that's like one inch away from the skill ceiling, and the skill floor is pretty high, meaning it does not require much skill to play, and there's not much knowledge to be learned that will improve your gameplay. On the other end of the spectrum, you have games like CSGO where it's really hard for new players, and it requires a vast amount of knowledge and practice to get even slightly good, let alone being one of the greatest. World of Tanks used to be a game with a lower than average skill floor, but a lower than average skill ceiling, meaning it's generally harder for new players to adapt since its gameplay is unique compared to most games, but mastery of the game does not require nearly as much practice and knowledge as other games. This was an interesting formula because if you could get past the learning curve, it wasn't that hard to become good at the game and enjoy it. Somewhere along the line, Wargaming realized that they can generate the most revenue with inclusion. That being, if everybody in the game is even marginally satisfied, the profits will go up. They realize that there are two distinct groups of World of Tanks players, the casual players and the tryhards. There is a monetary disparity between the two classes. If Wargaming does something to piss off the good players, most of the time the good players will protest, but ultimately continue to play the game, buying premium tanks and premium accounts. If the casual players are upset about a change Wargaming made, they will just stop playing. You have to understand, Wargaming is not like most companies, where most companies try to strike a balance between user satisfaction and revenue generated. Wargaming is the lowest scum on the planet, and if something does not directly hinder their revenues, they will not give the slightest shit about it, and I'm going to prove it to you. Artillery has been the single most controversial class in the game a class which consists of players sitting in the back and clicking through top-down view. This class by nature has a very high skill floor and a very low skill ceiling. This means it is extremely easy to play artillery, but there is not much room for improvement. Like, you know, top tier artillery players can lead their shots and move occasionally. This is a dog shit class because of this, Bad players can be more effective, and good players can be less effective. This is the classic rising of the skill floor and the lowering of the skill ceiling. So if players hate artillery so much, why hasn't Wargaming removed them? They've changed artillery 
several times, but no matter what they do, players still hate artillery. So why are they still here? It's because the bad players love artillery. Artillery gives them a fighting chance. And Wargaming recognizes that if they remove artillery, a sizable portion of the player base will stop playing because they will be forced to get better at the game and play a real class. If artillery stays in the game, people will continue to play even if they hate it. If they remove artillery, the bottom feeders will rage quit and that's a loss in revenue. I understand that artillery is beneficial in certain isolated cases where they can dig out a tank in a strong position, but if I'm being perfectly honest, why does the player who took the initiative to learn about a strong position get punished, whereas the base camping heavy, who knows very little about the game, gets to survive longer, and in some instances finish with a higher score simply because they avoided any conflict and thus avoided any artillery fire. Yes, there should be a counter to a tank in a strong position, but being clicked from the back of the map by some 44%er is not a solution. In the old days, a solution was shooting them in their weak spots, but tanks don't have those anymore. You could also try flanking them, but every map Wargaming releases is a corridor map of some sort, so flanking isn't an option. Despite this, I still think artillery is a low level class for incompetent players. Don't believe me? How many accounts are there that only play light tanks? Or accounts that only play medium tanks? There aren't that many. But there are thousands of accounts where the most played class, or the only played class, is artillery. I have seen it all from dedicated artillery accounts with 50,000 games to new players that have less than 1,000 games, but half of those are in the M44, which is also their highest tier tank. I don't care what you think, artillery is a low level noob class that allows shit players to still compete. Artillery is unfair and broken, and if I could have it my way, I would just flat out remove them because the benefits of removing artillery far outweighs the drawbacks. Uh, Cams, if Wargaming loves new and or bad players, why do tanks like the Left H exist? Wouldn't that discourage new players from playing? No. You'd be forgiven for thinking that, but new players don't understand artillery or what it is. They think it is just a normal game mechanic that they need to learn about. I'm not sure, but it's my sneaking suspicion that players believe the quality of gameplay will increase the higher the tier you go. So players might initially enjoy the game and attribute the game's bullshittery to their own inexperience and decide they've had enough with the low tiers and go ahead and buy the newest tier 8 premium. And that's what Wargaming wants. They want new players to buy a premium or two, or 10, and then give up. The new premiums Wargaming releases are carefully designed to cater to shitters. Like the Bofors Tornvang has been created specifically for shitters to sit in one position and be immune to all fire. Like, the T-34 wasn't enough. They took the T-34, removed all the weak spots, and made everything worse. And if that wasn't enough, they made the upper plate a retard-proof bar so that if you are extra trash at the game and you accidentally expose your hull armor while hull down, it doesn't matter. It's strong too. And all of its other stats are garbage. So not only is it not fun to play against, it's not fun to play the tank itself. However, it is the perfect tank for the new shitter to get their hands on because the gameplay is simple. Go hull down and click. Now, don't get me started on the hull down battle. Let's just talk about premium tanks for now. Wargaming implements two types of premium tanks. The actually good premium tanks and the premium tanks that new players can use 
that can easily counter them. They nerfed HE splash damage specifically so hull down tanks can stay strong. I'm willing to bet that the HE nerfs, despite causing an uproar, did not affect sales at all, but instead encouraged players to buy their hull down premium tanks since they can't be countered. And these players love hull down tanks because they are low skill tanks designed to raise the skill floor and lower the skill ceiling. But what really grinds my gears is auto ricochet angles. Why the fuck does every goddamn tank have some bullshit auto ricochet angle? Because it helps shitty players out. A good player will never rely on a tank's poor armor. The good player will rarely put themselves in a position where they would be getting shot. But shitters make mistakes all the time, and they get lucky ricochets. Take the Progetto 65. Its side armor can be overmatched, so good players don't bother side scraping. Its turret is weak too, so it would be a smart idea not to rely on its armor. But if you're a noob and make a mistake, don't worry, RNG is on your side. Seriously, why are there auto ricochet angles at 70 degrees? Look at this T125. Let's pretend he's driving over a rock and he exposes his belly like a moron. Surely that's a pen. No, no, it's not. But still, this on its own would be a minor inconvenience. Except for the fact that everything is balanced around having an auto ricochet upper plate. VZ55, auto ricochet upper plate. CS63, auto ricochet upper plate. AMBT, the whole damn tank is an auto ricochet angle. Let's say you are aiming down on it. A very bad position for him and a great position for you. You don't want to shoot his lower plate from this angle because it looks very steep and you might not pen. So you aim for the upper plate. No. Turret roof? Guess again. Side armor? Uh-uh. You don't pen it by shooting those places. You pen it by shooting those places with heat. And given that most tanks don't have heat as standard ammunition, that would require you to fire premium ammo. At a medium tank that's out of position. This caters to bad players because in the old days tanks had actual armor that you would angle and there'd be some ambiguity as to whether or not you could penetrate a tank based on the angle it's presenting. Not anymore. Now it's either you pen or you don't, depending on how lucky you are and where your shots go. You can subvert this luck by firing heat. Seriously, it is so easy for new players. Instead of thinking, hmm, my tank has roughly 250 millimeters of armor at this angle, but he has 258 millimeters of penetration. He may or may not penetrate my armor. It's up to me to decide if I will present my armor at this angle or wait for a better opportunity. And it's his choice whether or not he will choose to take the shot or wait for a better angle. Now, <laughs> it's simple. You either pen or you don't. Well, cams just don't aim for the auto ricochet angles. Yeah, well, you know, I wouldn't, but this game's accuracy mechanic is dog shit and it doesn't allow for that. That's another thing too. The accuracy mechanic just is retarded. Aiming your shots makes such little difference when your shot still has RNG, regardless if it's fully aimed or not. For example, look at this clip I found of some guy's channel. There are three spots on an S-Kong's turret which you can pen with heat. 340 heat, no less. Capola, gun mantle, and turret ring. Look where he aims. Pretty frustrating, right? Fully aim shots at weak points, miss or fail to penetrate. Ah, I am done with this game, dude. Like, what is this? Yeah, up, bro. It, it, it's perfectly sums up how bad this game is, man. Absolutely. Just roll the dice and get lucky. That wasn't as much as I wanted to push. Are you serious? Are you serious? 
Are you serious? What? What I've noticed is that bad players tend to snapshot more. We call it the shitter snapshot. I'm not sure why they snapshot more. I think it's because bad players tend to get out positioned more often. So they feel rushed and they feel the need to snapshot. Regardless, it's actually better to poke and snapshot than to poke, aim, and then fire. Because if you poke and snapshot, there's a chance that you will hit. But if you poke and fully aim, it's still a chance that you will hit. Except now you're standing still and it's easier for players to shoot you back. Is this how the game should be? Rewarding players who point and click and get lucky instead of people who aim? Honestly, I'd say the chances of hitting a Kronvon's Coppola fully aimed are just as small as trying to snapshot him. Because at the end of the day, it's up to RNG to decide if those shots are actually gonna go where you, where you aim. My point is, New players can get away with making mistakes because your fully aimed shots still misses their weak spot and hits some bullshit auto ricochet angle. Meanwhile, the shitter, who only noticed you after you shot them and bounced them, panics and snapshots you while getting into cover. And sometimes they hit their snapshots. Look at this clip of me sniping in the Udez 03. It's only the most accurate gun in the damn game. Jesus Christ, you know, if I managed to hit all those shots, we might have had a fighting chance in this game, but that would be unfair to the new players. Better lower the skill ceiling so it's harder for good players to do well, and let's raise the skill floor by allowing these shitters to get lucky and survive the game for longer. In patch 9.19, Wargaming decided to change the armor penetration indicator to reflect the effective armor values on the tank that you're aiming at. This is single-handedly one of the worst fucking changes they have ever made, and you idiots thought it was a good thing. I don't care if it makes it easier for new players to penetrate tanks. What the fuck is the point of having armor if you could just aim at a green spot and penetrate whatever you're aiming at? No wonder everything has impenetrable turrets with no weak spots. Because if there was even a single green pixel on a tank, the shitters could just wiggle their mouse until they find it and fire. Before this change, players had to estimate if they would penetrate or not. And if they were wrong, they would bounce, allowing the tank with armor to progress forward and return fire. Now, shitters just hold their shots until you expose a green spot. Of course Wargaming has to introduce an IS-4 at tier 8. If it even has a tiny weak spot, it'll get shot to shit. Why do you think the FV215B is so garbage? It has a side weak spot that requires knowledge of the game to hit. Not anymore. Hover over its side until you see a green spot and voila, you win. Look what this redditor had to say. I was able to fire at an IS-6 behind dense bushes by fighting the green indicator, semicolon. Before this update, I would have to randomly fire without knowing how the IS-6 was angling. How is this a good thing? You can't even see his weak spots, yet you can hit them. I don't care what you think. The armor penetration indicator is bad for the game. If you disagree with me, you are wrong and you should get good. The armor penetration indicator raises the skill floor and allows shitters to compete with better players simply because the game helps them out. The whole art of learning about a tank's armor profile is thrown completely out the fucking window because the game tells you where to shoot. All chat. Bad player is throwing the game because he bought a tier 8 premium heavy and is capping the base? How dare you tell the enemy where he is? It's everybody else's fault that the bad player lost the game because you told the enemy where he was. Maybe the bad player would figure out what he's doing is wrong. Maybe not. Better remove all chat just to be sure. After all, 
We wouldn't want our shitty players to get discouraged from playing the game now, would we? Here's a cool idea. If your team is so fed up with the way you are playing that they are willing to throw the game by telling the enemy where you are just to prove a point, maybe... Oh, I don't know, you're doing something wrong. I mean, yeah, it's stupid and against the rules to have your position given away, but you could just send a ticket in and get the person chat banned. We have a whole system for it and it works. Except shit players don't know what a ticket is or how to submit one. And it doesn't fix the fact that the player can still give away your position. So best remove it because God forbid bad players get punished for being bad. And don't give me the shitty argument. Oh, it promotes toxicity in chat. Really? I don't give a shit. First of all, you're on the internet. Second of all, there's a block button. So, you know, why don't you just quit being a bitch? <laughs> team damage? You're telling me I can't team kill someone who's playing like an imbecile? So they can drive as obnoxiously as they want. You're aiming at someone and they drive in front of you as you fire. Back in the day, that person would eat a shot in the back of their turret and they would teach that person to be more cautious as to where he's driving. Now it doesn't matter. Jump in front of your teammates. Have zero situational awareness. Who cares? I only look in front of me. There's no punishment for actually shooting the tanks next to you and team stunning you because there's no team damage, so who cares, right? You morons think disabling team damage was a good thing. It's not. It just helps the shit players not be so shit. <sighs> Invisible walls. The universal sign of a poorly made game. World of Tanks loves invisible walls. To the point where they have different types of invisible walls. All with the purpose of restricting your movement. Fuck you, Wargaming. There are two instances where invisible walls are obnoxious. First, there is the retard proofing of maps. Remember maps like Erlenberg? It became a meme because bad players would get themselves stuck on a certain part of the map. AMX 5100 goes full retard. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah, that's never going to work out for you, is it? And now, and now Hawk goes full retard. <laughs> he comes charging in, tries to ram the IS-6, completely misses the IS-6, and kills the AMX-5100, and then drowns himself. <laughs> but it's not over yet. Remember I said everybody that comes to this side of the map goes full retard. Um, just watch this. IS-3. This IS-6, I don't know how this IS-6 survived, but look, oh, suddenly, a wild KV-5 appears. And, and this IS-6, you, he's actually thinking, go on, drive forward a little, drive forward a little, and I will blow your... Yeah, and he's, he's debating, shall I just blow his tracks off and watch him drown? Nah, I'll just kill him. <laughs> oh, man. Pretty funny. And the player could learn that, oh, it's too deep to drive down there, better steer clear. Look at safe haven, retard proof. You couldn't even drive off if you wanted to, let alone pushing somebody off or doing anything. Like what the fuck is the point of having a physics engine if you can only drive on flat terrain? Again, raise the skill floor, but what really grinds my gears, a testament to Wargaming's never ending conquest to destroy any fun in their game. It's the addition of invisible walls to every fucking part of the map that you're not supposed to go to. Most players hate this change. These two polls I made show that the vast majority of players think climbing is good for the game. They provide a skill gap where players have something to learn and utilize. Wargaming disagrees. How are you supposed to go hull down with your impenetrable turret on a corridor map if people can climb to cool angles? You can't. And they're gonna make damn sure you can't. They will patch out every single fucking climb they find. They even have different types of invisible walls, all of which block the player. This mod I have only shows one of the types. Despite the fact that the majority of the player base thinks climbs are cool, Wargaming still cracks down on every fucking climb they can. You may have noticed the climb I did in this video. As of this video releasing, it's very likely that Wargame will put a big old fucking wall here so you can't go here anymore. Look at Mountain Pass. 55% of the fucking map is unplayable. You used to be able to climb every single mountain on this map. Not anymore. One by one, Wargaming cracked down and removed every single climb and replaced it with an invisible wall. 
Now, I'd like to give some responses to the concerns about climbs. No, Wargaming isn't going to disable invisible walls for team training rooms. That would require Wargaming to make two separate maps, for no reason other than the tiny group of people that want to climb. Another concern is that climbs are overpowered. To that I say, get good! But in all seriousness, people are concerned with the idea that tanks getting into positions that are too strong. To them I say, as long as they don't have a line of sight to your cap circle or the enemy cap circle, you could just ignore them and cap. Like, for example, light tanks getting to the zero line on Abbey. How could you bitch that, oh, it's overpowered because only light tanks can go there, when that's like the only spot light tanks can go? A lot of people point to the sacred valley climbs being overpowered, and how too many people would waste the game trying to get up there. This is largely due to the fact that Quickie Baby showed a replay of someone who got up there. I can see that a position like this is strong, but instead of putting invisible walls all over the fucking place, all Wargaming had to do was put a non-destructible building here. Arguably a simpler solution, and the building served no other purpose than to shield people from the climb. If players wanted to reset the cap, they would have to come down from the climb. It really is simpler to place a building here instead of putting up invisible walls the whole way around. Is the other side too strong? Raise the ground so they can't shoot that direction. There are many ways to fix even a slightly overpowered climb that doesn't involve slapping invisible walls and removing it for everyone else. Another concern is that only tanks like the EBR-105 can get to these locations, and they don't want the EBR-105 to be even more powerful. The thing is, the EBR-105 is strong at its top speed because it's hard to hit. It's kinda useless when you're going 20 kilometers an hour trying to drive up a hill and get spotted, and there's nowhere to go but down. And EBRs don't even have the view range to spot you that far away anyway. But if EBRs are such a concern for you, just nerf the EBR's traction so that it slips and slides on these slopes. Some players are concerned with the fact that some people will spend the whole game trying to climb instead of trying to fight, thus putting your team at a disadvantage. To that I say, it is no different to shitters camping the whole game or throwing their tank away in the first 30 seconds. Plus, People will spend the majority of time climbing in team training rooms, so if you ignore Sacred Valley, games where people have actually climbed to a cool spot are so incredibly small. I remember when maps didn't have invisible walls. One out of a thousand games you would find someone who made a climb, and it was a cool thing to witness. Of course, maps like Sacred Valley were much more common. But then Wargaming, why not just target that specific climb since it's the most prevalent? Instead of putting invisible wall, just put a big old boulder there. That way, you could still access it in team training rooms by having a bunch of dudes push you up there, but they would be essentially unreachable in pubs. You might be wondering, Kems, why are you talking so much about invisible walls? Well, it's because of two reasons. It's a demonstration of Wargaming's relentless control over what they think you should be able and not be able to do. And because there are some players that actually support these invisible walls, they think it's a good thing. They are the same players that support Gordor maps. That's right, there are actual living and breathing people on this earth that think pixel sniping weak spots from your little hull down is fun. Look at this poll I made. The buy modality demonstrates the good players from the bad. I bet these are the same players that think Prokhorovka is a bad map because it's too open. I get it, if there's 3 arty that map is pretty bad. But is that the map's fault or is it because there is 3 arty? I'd argue that 3 artillery is more annoying on steps than it is proc. Wargaming makes corridor maps because they are easy to play on. Wargaming makes hulldown tanks with no weak spots because they are easy to play with. Put them together and you got the shitty hulldown corridor meta. Wargaming loves the corridor meta because it allows them to sell more hulldown tanks to bad players. And bad players love going hulldown because it's an easy playstyle that they can do well in. This is why, despite the fact that most players like the idea of climbing, Wargaming cracks down on any climbs and patches them out of existence. I can't even reset the cap here. Far. Right? I can't even Gene. reset. No, there's the, the ridges in Bruh. the way. So like, you know, if an EBR got here, you could just cap yeah. and game is over. So, why is it a problem if I'm here? But... Yeah, counter like a it's... heavy push or something. It's not even so like, or like, if they didn't want me to shoot, they could just put this train all the way along. That way, if I shot here and I get lit, well, shit. Cope. 
Yeah, that's right. Cope. They could make the game more interesting, but they decide they take the lazy route and just put invisible walls everywhere. Yep. I don't understand it too. Like, who actually complains about this? Like when Halo I see, Infinite, on the other when, hand. When I see people on a climb, I don't think, well, that's unfair. I think, I want to try that. Literally. When I you see I don't, exactly. I don't dude, cry about literally. the game being unfair. Instead, I want to improve like, myself. Dude, mm -hmm. literally, like, back in the day, I do a climb in my, uh, like, with my dad. Like, we were in a platoon, right? And then he'd be like, yo, how did you do that? How'd you get up exactly. there? Exactly. Like, oh, I'll show you. And, but then Wargaming is like, no, it's unfair. It's like, is it though? Is it really? It's not. Okay, it's not unfair. Yeah, like, it takes skill. Can I be rewarded for skill? Or do I have to be rewarded for playing your new premium tank? Sounds like a skill issue. <laughs> it is a skill issue. <laughs> <laughs> How is little Johnny going to compete if he gets outflanked by a dude who's outside the map? Who the fuck even complains about climbing anyway? Some old fucker. When most people see someone making a cool climb, the first thing they think is, hey, that's pretty cool. I want to try that. Not, wow, that is so unfair. How are they supposed to bounce off my turret if they're in that location? I have absolutely no interest in learning about this position because I'm a casual player using my pension to buy tier 9 premium tanks. Wargaming, I know you watch these videos. You've got a whole department for it. I know you aren't going to remove invisible walls because you've already spent the time and money having them placed. But, the next time you introduce a map, why not skimp out on the invisible walls? Not only do you save time and money by not having to pay someone to program them in, but you also improve how dynamic the map is. If the community complains about a climb being too overpowered, then you can fix it by placing a rock or changing the slope a bit. You already put a lot of effort into patching out the climbs that players find, so why not patch out a climb when it actually becomes an issue for once? At least then it looks like you're doing something. You save money on map development and player satisfaction goes up. Your corridor map hull down meta isn't destroyed. It's hard to believe a few games where a dude makes a climb on some map is going to destroy the entire corridor map hull down meta. I would also ask for armor penetration indicator to be removed, artillery to be removed, and for them to add premium tanks that don't revolve around going hull down, but I know Wargaming isn't going to listen to those suggestions. The point of this video is to better inform you about the state of the game and what Wargaming does and why they do it, but also to show that some of the game's problems are because you guys made it that way. There are people that don't want dynamic maps. They love going hull down because they are bad and it's the easiest way for them to play the game. To that I say, get good. There are people who love playing artillery because they are trash at all other classes. They would rather sit at the back and get rewarded for putting as little effort as possible. To that I say, get good. There are people who like the armor penetration indicator because it helps them penetrate heavily armored tanks without them having to learn about said tank's armor layout. To that I say, get good. At the end of the day, as long as Wargaming is making money, they do not care how dissatisfied you are. They will release tier 10 premiums and retards will buy them. Complain all you want, they don't care. Why should they? You bitch and whine, but you still buy the Christmas loot boxes. This is the truly sad part about Wargaming, because it's not impossible to make a game that's fun to play and also generates good revenue. But that would require too much work on their part. They are perfectly content with running the game into the ground if it means they can make more money. Such a petty. It is why I'm not a community contributor for Wargaming. I can't fathom the idea of being endorsed by such a scummy company. You guys like to call me toxic. Look at the fucking game you're playing. Well, that's, that was an interesting rant. And I completely forgot to talk about Steel Hunter. The changes Wargaming made to Steel Hunter 100% validates my claims. I can't believe they took one of the most fun game modes and nerfed the fuck out of it because you shitlords could not handle it. Let me draw some comparisons between the original Steel Hunter and Frontline. They're basically polar opposites. The tiers, the teams, respawning, etc. Now, don't get me wrong. Frontline can be fun, but Steel Hunter was amazing. Shitters complained that it was too hard, and it's somehow the game's fault that they die in the beginning. They think it's all based on RNG or teaming. The amount of idiots that think people are teaming up against them is actually incredible. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe two separate people that didn't see each other saw you first, and they both attacked you at the same time? If you think you are dying because people are teaming, 
Maybe avoid putting yourself in a situation when you're in a crossfire. Teaming is not nearly as prominent as you think it is. Because all it takes is for one dude to send a ticket in and both your accounts get banned. So just shut the fuck up about teaming and RNG. And how about you get good? Or not. You could just bitch and cry until Wargaming nerfs the fuck out of the game mode. They remove the fun tags, replace them with the fat retard heavies, they remove the auto-loading high explosive guns, they removed almost every consumable and made them class specific. Tell me, when the fuck has removing features ever been a good thing? They literally dumb down the game mode to make it more inclusive to idiots. Look at the top comments on the polls I made. All agree that the second Steel Hunter is way less fun than the original. Mainly the consumables and the funny upgrades. I think that most people that hated Steel Hunter originally were just like this guy. When Steel Hunter first came out, I fucking hated it. But then I warmed up to it, and honestly, I'd say it's the most fun I've had on Watt. This is because, for the first time, Wargaming introduced a mode that actually required you to learn and have practice on, and people hated it because it had a learning curve to it. But when you figured it out, it was actually really fun. But the average Zoomer attention span meant these shitheads play only 2-3 to three games and have the nerve to say the game mode is bad instead of admitting that they don't understand it. It's your fucking fault that Wargaming dumbs down the game, and it's your fault that everything is streamlined and stale. Because the one fucking time they created something unique, and you cunts complained about it so hard that they had to water it down so shitters can compete. And the fucking arguments they make, the, the rewards are bad so why would I play it? For fun? Do you even know what that is anymore? How about, how about playing the game mode for fun? You know, fun. The reason you play the video game in the first place? I swear to god I fucking hate all of you and this is why.